Hi, welcome to ATL Miniatures. It's Mortal Rounds Monday, so today we're going to be continuing on with the magazine series. We're up to issue 10 now, and in this issue we're getting a Tomb Banshee. Let's open it up and see what we've got. As I mentioned in the intro, this week we're getting a Tomb Banshee, and we're also getting a pot of corn red. So we'll be adding more colour to our Nighthorn army. So starting off the magazine with some information on the Banshees. More background information on the Stormcasts. But this is the bit we're looking for to start with. Let's get this Tomb Banshee assembled. Now that she's assembled it's time to get her painted. I'll be back as soon as she's at the same stage as the other Nighthorn. Now that she's painted to the same stage as the other night haunts, we can switch back to the magazine and see the next step in the painting process. So it looks like we'll be adding more colour to all of our night haunt procession. So starting with Cantor Blue and the Chain Ross, I will gather them all together and I will show you the finished product. That's the Cantor Blue done on the Chain Ross now. Next up is the Glaive Wraith Stalkers. The blue on the Glaive Wraiths is now complete, so the next step of adding the Cantor blue to the Night Haunts is to paint the Thorns of the Briar Queen, so we'll be going on to that now. The Thorns of the Briar Queen are now finished, and with that the Cantor blue is complete. Next up is the Corn Red, and we'll be adding that to the Briar Queen to begin with. That's the Briar Queen done now, next up is the Tomb Banshee. The Tomb Banshee is done, next up is the Mine Worn Banshees, and then we'll be ready for the playthrough. The Mayan Banshees are now done, so the painting is complete, and now we can move on to the playthrough. The Stormcast Eternals emerged from a cloud of fog to see a group of spectral Banshees gathered around the entrance of a large stone tomb. The gaze swept back and forth across the crumbling doorway, chill daggers readied. They must be guarding something valuable. Crack open that tomb. What we seek may lie within, ordered Anastasia Starstrike, gesturing towards the dark opening. A single sequitur stepped forward. Storm Smite Great Mace slung over a broad shoulder and led the attack. This week's playthrough sees the two new Stormcast from last issue face off against four Mymorn Banshees and the new Tomb Banshee. In this playthrough, we learn more about taking turns. So, in previous playthroughs, only the player whose turn it is has been able to fight, whereas now both players get to fight in each combat phase. We also get updated War Scrolls for the Sequitors and the Mind Worn Banshees and the new War Scroll for the Tomb Banshee that came with this issue. So let's get stuck into this playthrough. So as the Sequitors only have one unit, they'll be starting. So we'll begin by piling in three inches. I haven't got the usual battle map with me at the moment. So I'm just using this replacement table mat. Right, we'll start by picking targets now. So obviously we're in base contact with the Mymorn Banshees, so we'll be fighting them. And we'll be doing the Storm Smite Mauls separately to the Great Mace. So we'll be using the red dice for the Mauls and the white dice for the Great Mace. Each of them having two attacks each, and both of them looking for a three plus to hit. So the Great Mace has actually rolled a 6, which means that that does D3 hits instead of 1. So we'll do that separately in a moment. And all four of the Maul's attacks are successful. So let's roll for the Great Mace. So that's getting a 1, so that's only doing 1 hit. So no bonus this turn. Looking for 3 plus again to wound on all of it. So getting 4 wounds. And the Banshees are looking for a 4 plus to save. Rolling 2 sixes, so 2 saves, 2 wounds going through. So now we allocate the wounds. So add up the total damage, one at a time the player being attacked allocates one wound for every one damage. 
If a model is already wounded, you must continue to allocate wounds. It's only the first turn, so that doesn't count. Now the Banshees have two, have one wound each even, so we'll be removing two of them. We'll start with the furthest ones away from the camera. And now still in the first turn, it is the Banshee's turn to attack. So the Tomb Banshee, if that's within three inches, can pile in. Which it is. So we move her into base contact with Anastasia. And the same with this Banshee here. So the Banshee, the Tomb Banshee has one attack. And the Mimorm Banshees have one attack. But if the Tomb Banshee rolls a six, then it gets D3 mortal wounds. So we use a separate dice for that. So she can have the white dice in this instance. Both looking for a four plus to hit. Neither successful. So no wounds for the sex twist this time. Moving on to Night Horton Time 1. And again, they're already in base contact, so we'll just go straight into the fight. So same again, four plus to hit. I've only been rolling one dice, there's two Banshees. So two hits, and what I'll do now is actually roll the one dice for the previous guy that I missed. Getting a six, so that's one hit for the previous guy. Let's do that quickly now before we move on. Looking for a three plus to wound. Getting a three. Sex to saving on a four plus. Getting a six, they save, so that didn't actually matter. Right back to this turn. Right, let's roll that again because I've already forgotten what I got. So, one white dice for the Tomb Banshee, two dice properly this time for the Mimorn Banshees, three plus to hit. All three hit. Four plus to wound. Two wounds. And again, four plus to save for the Secretors. Getting a five and a six, so again, no successful wounds going through. Now it's the Secretor's turn to attack back. So two attacks each for Anastasia and the Secretor at the back. Two attacks for the Secretor here with the Great Mace. Three plus to hit. No for the Great Mace. And two hits for the Anastasia in the other sector. So again, three plus to wound. Getting a four and a six. There's four plus save for the Tomb Banshee and Mimorn Banshees. Getting a five, so one wound going through. I forgot to allocate which ones I was attacking, so but obviously they're in base contact. And um, what we'll do is begin by taking the Mimorn Banshee off the table. So that way this sector and the next one can pile in, attack the Tomb Banshee. The Tomb Banshee has four wounds, so we'll hopefully get rid of her as quickly as possible. So that's the end of Night Haunt turn one. Right, Stormcast turn two. So, as I said, we'll pile that one around. White dice for the Great Mace, red for the Wolves. Three plus to hit. Two hits for the Great Mace, but only one for the Wolves after getting three ones and a three. So both successful for the Great Mace, one successful for that. So we'll roll the 
save for the Tomb Banshee first. Four plus to save. Getting a five. So no wounds yet for the Tomb Banshee. So four plus to save. So one wound going through. One wound saved. And it's two damage per attack. So that one only has one wound anyway. So that's out of action. So now we're on to the Night Haunts fight. Banshee one attack, four plus to hit. I only roll in a one. So now, Night Haunt turn two. She's already in base contact, so she won't be moving. So she'll just start by attacking. Four plus to hit. Rolling a two, unsuccessful. So now on to the Secretor's attack. Pile in with that one. As they've still got all three of their all three of them still standing. Same as before. White dice for the Great Mace. Three plus to hit. Great Mace rolling a six. Which means that we'll be doing the Great Ma Great Mace Blast. Two successful hits for the mauls. Right, so when the Great Mace rolls a six, it the hit is D3 hits instead of one. So let's roll that. Getting a five, so that's three hits. So four hits for the Great Mace. And the two for the mauls. Looking for three pluses to wound. Five successful, so Team Banshee needs to make these saves. Saving on a four plus. Getting a four and a six. So two saves, meaning two wounds are going through. So she is down to two wounds. Right, back to the Tomb Banshee. Let's see if she can finally take any of these secretaries out. Looking for a four plus to hit. Only rolled in a one, not so successful. Over to the secretaries, can they finish her off? Four dice for the mauls, two for the great mace. Three plus to hit. One hit from the Great Mace, two from the Mauls. Looking for a three plus to wound. No wound for the Great Mace, but two for the Mauls. Tomb Banshee looking for four plus to save. Getting one force of one wound going through. She's got one wound remaining and is yet to inflict any damage on any of the sectors. Can she do it now? Looking for a four plus to hit. She gets a five. Looking for a three plus to wound. She gets the three. Can the sectors make the save on a four plus? Oh, they can. Still no wounds. So back to the secretaries, can they finally finish her off? So, only one unsuccessful hit roll there. Looking for three plus to wound.
four wounds going through. Can the Tomb Banshee make the saves? Four plus the save. She makes three of them, which means one of them is going through. She only had one wound remaining. So it's all over for the Banshees. Anastasia and the Sectors successfully wiped out all the Banshees without sustaining a single wound. That is the end of the playthrough for this issue. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Leave any comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.